Welcome to this week's edition of the FA Show. I'm Nate Barrett. We start this week with a noticeable lack of boom in Merrill's recent Project Thunder announcements. As reported in Advisor Hub, comments made by Merrill President Andy Sieg focused solely on policy changes, not compensation issues that spurred complaints among brokers about prior year's haircuts to their pay. Sieg, who has led the Merrill brokerage since 2017, acknowledged the negative response to modifications to the pay plan in recent years, noting, quote, a lot of hard work, therefore, is in the rearview mirror, so you're going to see a much, much, much lower level of change. For 2021, Merrill kept its grid hurdles, payouts, and growth requirements steady, but eliminated pay on sub-250,000 dollars accounts. Earlier this month, Raymond James announced they too would not be making changes to comp in 2022. Morgan Stanley successfully fended off a $4 million wrongful termination claim from a former manager in Florida. Robert P. McCabe Jr., now a branch manager at Oppenheimer and Co.'s Palm Beach Gardens office, also lost his bid to expunge the firing from his record, according to the award issued by a three-person panel on September 14th. McCabe, who was an On Wall Street Magazine Top 100 branch manager from 2010 to 2012, had overseen 60 brokers at Morgan Stanley at the time of his departure. Archer. Morgan Stanley terminated McCabe from his post as West Palm Branch Manager in June 2018 for his role in onboarding a recruit, according to U5 language available on a CRD snapshot report. The arbitrators gave no reason for the ruling in the award. Prior to the pandemic, putting rear ends in seats was a popular phrase among advisors who've often utilized seminars as a tool to de generate new business. On today's episode of The Advisor's Advisor, I wanna share with you a different approach that could be better than bottom and seats. It could lead to referrals and managing generation of wealth. What's the topic? I'll let you know right after this. Hi. I'm Jeff Crosby, Barron's top advisor, 24-time Ironman finisher, husband, father, entrepreneur, and hopefully a lifelong learner. Let me ask you this question. Other than our spouse, who do most people love more than themselves? Yep, our children and grandchildren. If that's the case for you, then why don't we create a market to get to mom and dad and our grandma and grandpa as clients while also helping their children or grandchildren? At Crosby Wealth Advisors, we create a webinar slash Zoom series, Fridays with Jeff, and do a series called Teens, Parent, and Money. In it, we focus on the younger generation and teach them basic terminology as well as life skills. Kids, mine included, often don't like to listen to their parents when it comes to topics like money. So having access to outside authority, you, has high perceived value. What if we're also teaching the parents or grandparents while we teach the kids? Maybe there's some areas that just never hit home for the parents or grandparents or the partner who isn't as involved with the finances. We teach financial terms, budget basics, how the stock market works, as well as answer money-related questions. The rule of 72 has to be one of the concepts you share. The end result? Kids are educated, parents and grandparents are educated, and if structured properly, referrals will follow, and it also helps keep generational wealth in your client base. Good luck, and instead of bottom and seats, let's embrace the new audience venue and now get bottoms in front of their computer screen. Looking for more practice management tips and strategies? Check out the full library of videos on our website at 3xequity.com practice. This week, Advisor Hub publisher and CEO Tony Siriani sits down with Matt Chisholm, SVP of Practice Management and RIA Services at Commonwealth. There are certain things, I mean, the Delta variant doesn't care about our problems and, and neither does the economy, right? So we're, we're, we're entering sort of an interesting phase. We have inflation potentially. There's just, you know, the job thing is a weird mix of, you know, people not working and jobs being available. It's just, it's just we're not used to that. Um, what are you guys doing from a practice management st standpoint to sort of talk about um, uh, the economy with advisors? So, you know, a lot of what you the labor, the, the, the jobs is really, I think that the number one thing that we agree with, it's really hard to figure out. 
you know, we, we're seeing higher turnover ourselves in, in areas in the field and in home office. We have a lot of open recs that we're really challenged to fill. Um, yeah. We put a, a big bet on diversity and inclusion and have even widened our reach to, to find candidates and pools in that spirit. And yet still, um, you know, the numbers just don't seem to add up. Part of the hope is that a lot of the, the subsidies and the COVID relief that folks have been uh, you know, relying on is, is starting to dry out. And so hopefully that does kind of bring some folks back into the workplace. Uh, yeah. We also are seeing a lot of returners or second careers, adjacent careers now because of the flexibility um, you know, and having the commiserate underlying skill sets. Um, yeah, that's yeah. another area where we're trying to exhaust to start to fill in some of that, that wage discrepancy and, and, and employment gap that we've, we're struggling with. And in terms of advisors dealing with, with clients and maybe some resources that you have, you know, the, the, for them from a practice management standpoint, um, ta taxes is an issue that no one knows what's going to happen. It affects almost all of our clients, particularly if there's a cap gains tax or a stepped up cost basis, stuff like that. Um, what are you all doing to sort of help your, your advisors manage? Because we don't, it's an unknown, but it's scary and it's something's coming. We know they're, they're really pushing for it. So what, what are we hearing about that? Yeah, I, I think the number one thing that we're seeing it, from our advisors, and it's the different sides of the same coin, it's a succession or it's an exit. And, and to the point, a lot of them are being driven because of pending tax changes. And, you know, is now the time markets are high? Um, you know, if I wait too long, am I going to miss on my big capital gains opportunity? So to that end, what we have done is started to, well, we've done two things. We've really started to institutionalize our support of advisors looking for successors or um, buyers. And we've also brought a lot more liquidity flexibility to bear to kind of help either fund the buyout or accelerate the exit because of you know, the need and the wants to avoid or are the potential change in some of the tax legislation. Okay. The, um, the, the, the idea is, you know, everything from loans to cash flow purchases and other forgivables, it, it's, it's really to create a suite of flexibility. So not only can we help quantify the how and the what it's worth, but then how do we actually play our role in capitalizing it? And since we're still independent as far as our advisors are concerned, and we're not taking equity ownership or any kind of W2 type of advisor model, um, this is all built out in the spirit of continuing. For the complete interview, as well as other discussions with industry leaders and influencers, visit the Advisor Hub TV section of advisorhub.com. We turn now to the recruiting wire powered by 3X Equity, the authority on advisor transitions. A trio of Merrill Michiganders has jumped ship to UBS. Kevin e. Butler, a 15-year veteran Merrill Lynch wealth management broker in Gross Point, moved to UBS Wealth Management USA last week, bringing a four-year broker and wealth strategy associate with him. Another partner did decide to stay behind. Butler had $216 million in client assets and $1.3 million in annual production, according to a source familiar with his practice. He had also been a producing manager overseeing the Gross Point branch, according to his formal Merrill website. RBC continues to keep up the recruiting pressure on its larger wirehouse rivals, this week plucking a four-person Lincoln, Nebraska team from Wells Fargo Advisors. The group is led by 20-plus year industry veterans Gerald Dole Jr. and Douglas Cusack, who made the move along with associate financial advisor Gregory Yank and client associate Kelly Cruz. Now known as the Dole Cusack Group, the team managed about $450 million in client assets. For a complete look at the charts and a log of recent moves, as well as access to the Advisor Hub offers tool to find out what your practice is worth, visit the deals and comp section of advisorhub.com. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of the FA Show on Advisor Hub TV, powered by 3X Equity. I'm Nate Barrett. Have a great day.